This is the engine, the remains of the engine. The power source was very mysterious, it was a photo flood, flood bulb. Photo floods are very hot, so the engine melts. And this was rebuilt many, many times actually, probably at least half a dozen times in the life history. This original sphere as drawn wasn't a sphere. I think the correct term is an oblate spheroid, a bit like an orange when you sat on it. And, um, but it was much easier to make it as a sphere. And so actually, this was actually just a genuine two hemispheres of perspex, tinted green, and with the, the stripes applied to it. It's as simple as that. An image of a spaceship, like the Liberator on the screen, can be done in various many ways. I mean, using a model is actually only one way. Some things can be done with cutouts of a model or even artwork animated against the background. It's done in movies, it's done in television. Some of the earlier shots, in fact, for Blake were done as two-dimensional artwork of the or photographs of the Liberator against the background. I tended to want to do them in three dimensions, so I tended to redo a lot of the Liberator right to left, Liberator left to right type of shots. Sustained. Level five. Ah! For the episode where the Liberator returned home to Space World in the episode Redemption, they wanted a, a version of the Liberator gun, the pain gun, so we came up with this rather um, pretty device. And it was at a time when electronics were changing. In the old days, you'd have sort of rickety motors turning switches and go click, 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 using a lot of current and uh, produce this sort of flashing light effect. This is actually one of the new devices which use solid state transistors, heaven forbid, which are all built, actually built into it. Unfortunately, it wasn't that modern. It still needed this battery pack to run it. All malfunctions have now been rectified. Systems are fully operational. Lock on the docking flight path. Confirm. Release. The Liberator design actually spawned another craft. This is also from the episode Redemption. And they used the same sphere. These were supposed to be fighter versions. It had the same trouble with the prongs, which are always getting bent. And basically, they were just the weapon pod version of the Liberator, and there was the two of them. They had the same light source in the back, which had the same problems that if you left them on for too long, they melted. For season two, I tended to do just the model filming. I did a couple of studios as well, whereas my colleagues Peter Pregham and Andy Lazelle did the studios. So we were actually sort of preempting what actually is becoming the norm now. We actually sort of did it probably for the first time. So it did mean that I could actually get a file together of, of various uh, drawings, photographs, proper shot lists of things, of actually what was going to actually be happening within any, any particular storyline. We've made it. Well done, Jenna. Information. Sensors register secondary launch. A space vehicle in pursuit. I suppose the second most famous ship after the Liberator were the Pursuit ships. The Liberator was the good is, the Pursuit ships were the bad is. Now we had two sizes of these. This actually is, the larger one, is actually one of the vacuum form ones that would have been blown up. I'm not quite sure how this one survived. Normally if it's available to be blown up, we'll blow it up. This one actually has survived, more or less. But you can see the, the lightweight structure, or the flimsy structure of that particular one. This is the little tiny Pursuit ship that would be used for more distant shots. <laughs> I often get asked, well, somebody asked me once, uh, what do you actually build the models out of? In which the easy reply is anything and everything. Um, the days are still there when we go down to the local Woolworths or whatever, or DIY store, and we rummage around and look for things like, oh, it's a nice lampshade, that will make a nice spaceship. On the logic that really a spaceship can be anything. There's a ship, it's coming in for a surface landing. Have they spotted you? I've got the detector shield up. What sort of a ship is it? I don't know. It's a new type to me. It was on the screen for approximately one and a half seconds. Now, you can't really justify spending a lot of money building a model for one and a half seconds on the screen. So I basically took two hairdryers and stuck them together. On the screen, you never saw there were two hairdryers. Unfortunately, stupid fool that I am, on my one of my then original swap shop programs, I actually gave the game away, and because nobody will let me forget it now, that these are in fact two hairdryers flying away through space. 
the effects on Blake were like any other effects program in that they were a team effort. So we had several people working on it over the, particularly over the four seasons. I, Ian Schoon started. I came in on season one. Uh, myself, Peter Pogram, Andy Lazell did season two, and for season three and four, other people like Jim Francis, Steve Druitt, Andy again, and Mike Kelt came in also to cover it. So it was it, there was a fair number of people actually covering the various effects over the complete four seasons. Working on Blake was an experience, I think I can put it down to it. It was the first big science fiction series, apart from Doctor Who, that I'd worked on. My real wish is I see the stuff coming out on video now and I would really like to have the opportunity of saying, let's do that again using modern technology.